Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the newspaper analysis of 22nd July 2023. Let's start the discussion. The first article is about India Sri Lanka relation. The president of Sri Lanka Vikram Singh is visiting India and he had met Prime Minister Modi and both of them had conversations and few agreements, few documents have been signed between two countries. Uh, I will also give brief introduction between India and Sri Lanka over the years, how the relationship have been evolved. Uh, let's get into the Microsoft white, whiteboard so that I'll uh, sort out the things which have been signed between two countries in a single page. Both the leaders had a discussion on 13th amendment. I'll talk about 13th amendment also at the end of this article. And there was a development assistance package for Indian origin Tamil people who are residing in Sri Lanka from Indian side. And there was an uh, in infrastructure project that to connect both the countries and the process of rebuilding for equality, justice and peace. And they also signed documents regarding animal husbandry, renewable energy, uh, projects in Trincomalee district and also online payment services. India's online payment services are extremely appreciated around the world. So India has signed an agreement to support uh, Sri Lanka in that particular aspect. And also Sri Lanka thanked India for its help during uh, the crisis. Uh, last year, Sri Lanka was uh, financially, it was very difficult for Sri Lanka and there was also uh, civil disturbances in the country. At that time, India helped financially and also food grains and commodities uh, also been exported to Sri Lanka and also India helped in international organization, especially in IMF to grant uh, monetary packages to ease out the situation in Sri Lanka. There is a plan also to connect Nagapattinam, that is a, a place in Tamil Nadu, to the uh, Kanke Santurai, that is a place in uh, Sri Lanka. That project is also in talk and connecting electric grids, grids of both the countries is also under the conception and China Jaffna air connectivity also increase. These are the important aspects of uh, India Sri Lanka relationship. Let me give you guys brief introduction regarding uh, India Sri Lanka relationship over the years. We have a shared cultural and economic heritage and we have a people to people interaction as well. And Sri Lanka is extremely important for India, especially for its uh, strategic situation in the position in the Indian Ocean. And if you, if we look at the cultural aspects, we, the connection of Ramayana and Buddhism plays very important point in the uh, bilateral connection. And North and Northeast region in Sri Lanka is economically integrated in India integrated to India and in 1998 India Sri Lanka we signed a free trade agreement and India and Sri Lanka we have been uh, collaborating and cooperating in various international organization including Beamstech, SARC and others as well but there are some challenges to our relationship as well the important is China factor the involvement of uh, Belt and Rush Road initiative in by Sri Lanka is a uh, bone of contention since China comes very near to the maritime borders of India and even China's involvement in Hambantota port and Colombo port is also a matter of concern for India and there is a lack of bipartisan support to India in forums like UNO many a times uh, Sri Lanka has abstained voting in favor of India even though being a very closest mar maritime neighbor it's still there these challenges pose the question mark in bilateral relationship and the ethnic issue is extremely crucial in our relationship especially Indian origin Tamil minority I will talk about this at the end of this article also and fisherman dispute is another aspect where fisherman has been that uh, there is a frequent uh, tussle between uh, Sri Lankan uh, authorities and Indian fisherman and many a time fishermen have been arrested by Sri Lankan authorities and Tamil Nadu uh, chief minister ministers have time and again raised this issue at the, to the central government to take actions against uh, this particular act of uh, Sri Lanka and let's talk about Tamil issues what exactly it is uh, Ceylon it devised a mechanism so that it would be difficult for Indian origin Tamil to acquire state citizenship. So somewhere the people, the Indian origin Tamils in Sri Lanka, they feel uh, violated there. So it, it uh, took a turn of uh, the fight between uh, government and the, this group of people. 
and in 1964 there was a pact between lal bahadur shastri and siri mao and the pact is shastri siri mao pact of 1964 where sri lanka agreed to give citizenship up to the you know, 3 lakhs indian tamils at the same same time india agreed to repatriate a sizable uh, people from uh, sri lanka to india in india agreed to take back few of uh, indian origin tamils into the country but the situation deteriorated in 1977 and 1981 especially tamil riots and ltte organizations were very active during that era but finally in 1987 there was an agreement uh, that is india sri lanka accord in 1987 that accord gave certain autonomy to the uh, sri lankan tamilians of that region and 13th amendment uh, it is an outcome of this 1987 that india sri lanka accord of 1987 and it was signed by prime minister of india at that time rajiv gandhi and jayawardene the prime president of uh, sri lanka of that time uh, the, the, it is an attempt to you know solve that uh, sri lankan ethnic conflict that tamil issue that was going on and it was affecting both the countries you know the, there was a civil a war kind of situation and civil war was going on between ltte that is liberation of the tigers of tamil elam which led to a struggle to a separate state they were asking for a separate state uh, from the sri lanka and this uh, 13th amendment they have decided to give some provision they have they have decided to set up provincial governments across the country and there will be nine provincial governments and each provincial government will be having certain the uh, amount of autonomy to conduct the administration they also agreed according to the 13th amendment the tamil will be one among the official language and english is a link language this is sri lanka is a sinhala sinhalese majority with um, sinhala as a official language language and uh, buddhism as a uh, major following uh, religion in the sri lanka this is it about this article let's move on to the next, next article in the next article more cases of sexual assault of women have been surfaced in manipur but you have to see this from a perspective of ethics i have been telling that uh, whenever this kind of uh, situation arises see this as a case studies and think yourself as an administrator and what steps you take and this will help you for uh, Uh, especially uh, case studies in paper 4 and it will save you a lot of time if you prepare these kind of uh, case studies on daily basis in the next article rajasthan has passed a bill for minimum income and uh, rajasthan also passed and uh, uh, they have put a place uh, placed a bill which is exactly like mg narega mg narega is rural employment guarantee scheme but rajasthan bill is about ur- urban employment guarantee scheme where 125 days of work will be guaranteed for the urban population now see usually state government schemes and uh, plans are not important from exam perspective but this thing is very unique you, even central governments it was having discussion to uh, implement this kind of uh, scheme at the all india level so these kind of unique schemes are important and also you can uh, write this as an example that uh, in a federalis- federalism structure you can take uh, inspiration from state governments where you can quote these kind of examples in your answers let's move on to the next article let's move on to the editorials actually none of the editorials are important from exam perspective but this particular one internet re- internet ban in manipur there are few points you can use it in your answers again in the whole article most of it are very uh, very detailed which is nowhere helpful for your examination i have picked a few points from this editorial let's start a start the discussion on this particular one in manipur violence is going on from so many days and since may that violence is continuing in manipur but the mainstream media and we all came to know after the viral video the recently two naked women have been paraded by group of men they were harassing these two women after that everybody got to know that the extent of oppression that is going on in manipur and somewhere author says that internet shutdown had a role to play regarding this because of that people they could not able to know what exactly was going on there and manipur saw a con- repetitive ban of internet shutdowns that internet uh, ban uh, that permission one giving repetitively and it has been uh, uh, 
extended for a very long time and author says that it goes against the court order dur during Jammu and uh, Kashmir case at that time court given order that you cannot extend the uh, internet ban for undefined point of time and it goes against the constitutional ethos of our country and under the Puttaswami case uh, the internet ha has become a right and has come under the right to life of article 21. So it goes against the court order and it also said that it is a breach of directions of a court order. See you are extending that ban unilaterally for uh, very long time long time and repeat uh, provisions and repeat uh, signatures have been given to extend this order in this scenario court also thinking about limited internet uh, shutdown scenario where few services will be available to the people rather than completely uh, prohibiting all the services of the internet like access to the government websites access to the e-banking system or the hospital services these kind of services can be able to uh, Hello, and like people can access these kind of services and this is limited internet shutdown this idea can be implemented if the situation is extremely out of hand rather than completely banning internet the authorities can go for limited internet shutdown and how difficult it is how successful it is it is again a question mark whether will it be completely successful or is it of no use that again we need to study on these kind of things and since there are no clear definitions regarding what to ban and what not to what extent there are no clear definitions the ban continue continues for very long time and this is what happening at various parts of the country it is not only the story of manipur and uh, and author suggests that part partial restoration as uh, court suggested can be considered in these kind of uh, situation and another aspect is uh, usually internet is banned to uh, protect from uh, misinformation or wrong information or there are culprits who you take use of this situation to develop hatred among uh, communities but uh, there is a counter factor to it because of the net ban even the misinformation spreads in the region so information flow is necessary for accountability of both central government as well as state government and it is necessary to ensure justice truth and reconciliation in the next article there is a mention of assam rifles since there are very less number of article let me give you guys brief introduction regarding uh, central armed forces that is paramilitary forces and uh, there is another article where it has been mentioned regarding national commission of women since i have not given uh, any details about national commission of women throughout the any of my articles i'll complete those uh, that particular aspect as well let's start with uh, central armed forces we have a dedicated special forces especially regarding anti-terrorism urban warfare and vip protection uh, there are seven important paramilitary forces there are Assam Rifles, Border Security Force, Central CISF, Central Industrial Security Force, CRPF, Central Reserve Police Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Police that is ITBF and National Security Guard and Sashastra Seema Belt. These are the important paramilitary forces and Russian, sorry, Assam Rifles, it is the oldest among them. It has been established in 1835 and this is oldest of all paramilitary forces. The main role of Assam Rifles is uh, especially regarding Northeast and even in the Northeast, the Arunachal Pradesh and the Sikkim that comes under uh, Sashastra B Madal, sorry, ITBP that comes under ITBP and all other national, uh, sorry, uh, Northeast eastern states uh, will be handled by assam rifles next come the border security force it has been constituted after indo-pakistan war in 1965 and it is called as india's first line of defense and it mainly uh, it mainly regulates the indo-pakistan uh, border and next comes the uh, cisf that is industrial security force as the name suggests it mainly concentrates on uh, public sector undertaking airport scz uh, on a case to case basis it is established in 1965 under the act CASF act of 1968 next come central reserve police force and it has been uh, constituted under the act CRPF act of 1949 uh, and the primary mission is for counter insurgency and also if any law and order situation arises in a state or union territory CRPF is the first uh, central armed forces take action in those uh, uh, places and uh, this force also participate in uh, united nation peacekeeping missions and the next comes is uh, 
ITBP, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, it is established in 1962 after Indochina war and it was also created under a CRPF Act and it guards India and Tibetan border and as I mentioned before, uh, it also regulates Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh border. And finally, Sashastra Seema Bill and it has been constituted in 1963 that is also after Indo-Sino war and they guard India-Nepal border and India-Bhutan border and they also deploy during uh, elections as a poll booth security. Let's move on to the next uh, article. In this article, National Commission, of Women, National Commission for Women has taken uh, cognizance on uh, some of the incidents that is happening in Manipur. Uh, but important here is NCW. Let me give you guys a brief introduction regarding this. This has been uh, set up under uh, the National Commission for Women Act 1992, and it is a statutory body. And for all the most all the, I mean all the almost all the statutory body appointment will be done by central government. If it's constitutional body appointments will be done by president. And uh, the main objective is to review the constitutional and legal safeguards of women, and it re uh, recommends the remedial legislative measures of uh, any issues related to women and facilitate redressal of uh, uh, grievances and it advised the government on all policy matters that affects women and the composition uh, let's see the composition it has a chairperson and uh, plus five members all of them are appointed by central government and the term is for three years even for chairperson and members as well and the main uh, removal uh, the central government uh, removes uh, both the chairperson and the members as well in the next article, Congress has urged President of India to impose President rule in Manipur. Uh, this is more, more, more of a political article, but the President rule has been mentioned here. Let me give you guys basic introduction regarding President rule as well. Uh, article 356, which talks about President uh, rule and it gives power to President to suspend the state governments and impose the President rule. And the 365 can be imposed only if the state government is not running according to the Constitution of India. Then only a uh, President can impose the Article 356 and take control over it. And this is also called state emergency or constitutional emergency. Remember, it is only for a constitutional breakdown, not the political breakdown. And uh, once it has been imposed, uh, the Council of Ministers will be suspended and the state will directly come under the center and government, sorry, governor will head all the proceeding and he represents the, the power of president in the state. And the parliamentary approval, let's see parliamentary approval and duration. Usually this proclamation has to be approved within two months by both the houses and approval, ta this approval uh, uh, takes place through a simple majority. And it is initially valid for six months only. Within six months, election have to be conducted. If if it's not have election could not able to conduct, then it can extend up to three years. That is a maximum time. But after every six months, this has to be repealed. Sorry, this has to be revoked. Uh, it has to be reapproved in a parliament by the both the houses. That every six months once it has to be reapproved. Then the maximum period is three years. Within three years, next election has to be conducted and a government should be there for the state government. And let's see the revocation. It is revoked by president at any time uh, by a subsequent proclamation and it does not require a parliamentary approval. Finally, let me wrap up this uh, session by showing a map based uh, current affair concept. And today, since Sri Lanka was in news, and there was a mention of four or five uh, points there. Uh, there is a mention of Trikonmali port. The, also, there was a mention of Trikonmali uh, district. And here is it. And Hamban Tota port is here. Port of Colombo, you can see it here. And also, there was an uh, agreement to connect Nagapatanam and Kanka Senturai, this port. And there is this, here it is. And you see it from uh, uh, geography perspective. This is it for the day, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for listening.